Few states have been hit harder by the opioid epidemic than Massachusetts. Last year alone, about 2,000 people there died of opioid-related overdoses. For friends and family looking to help their loved ones on the road to recovery, the state has a law that sends men in particular to be treated while living in jail. Some call that old-fashioned incarceration. Others say it's the lifeline the men need to fight their addiction. NewsHour Weekend's Hari Sridhar has more. Correct. Okay. Past Correct. the secure gates of the Hamden County Jail in western Massachusetts, Sheriff Nick Kochi is taking us to meet incarcerated men who haven't necessarily committed a crime. These are all people that are at a, a point in their life where forced treatment and necessary immediate treatment was called for. The sheriff runs a program for men who've been civilly committed for substance abuse treatment under a Massachusetts law called Section 35. Here, for the first, uh, say, four or five weeks, you can't go anywhere. You're here. Our first stop is a daily mindfulness meditation class. Someone watching this, they're literally going to hear the new age music and they're going to see guys on floor mats deep breathing and they're going to say, what's going on with the sheriff? He's supposed to be making tough sure. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I've always said this. A fair county sheriff is giving them the resources and the tools to address those issues and to go back into the community and be successful. Uh, we're saying there's a better life and we're saying we can help you get there. Under Section 35, a family member, police officer, or doctor can petition a court to commit an individual. That is, hold them involuntarily if that person has an alcohol or substance abuse problem and is a risk of serious harm to themselves or others. Similar to involuntary commitment for mental illness, after an evaluation by a clinician, a judge can section a person, as the process is known, for up to 90 days. For women, that means receiving treatment in a civil facility, but for most men, it means getting treatment in a jail. It's a tool to be used as a last resort. We would love for people to uh, put their hand up and say, I have an addiction issue and I need help and I'm willing to go get that help, but that's not the case all the time. So it's important that the family members have an option that they can help bring their loved one and actually get them the help that they need, whether they're ready for it, prepared for it, or want it or not. The law has been on the books since 1970, but the number of people committed has gone up nearly 66% in the past 10 years thanks to the opioid crisis. The noise level's down, it's the, there's not a lot of commotion. In Kochi's program, the men are housed in a unit that's isolated from those who are criminally incarcerated. The men are called clients rather than inmates or prisoners. There's 24-7 medical treatment available, including drugs like methadone, buprenorphine, and naltrexone, all of which are FDA approved to treat opioid addiction. And there's access to addiction counselors and daily group therapy. The rooms are jail cells, but Sheriff Kochi says the doors are not locked and the men here aren't confined to them. So the, the days are very structured, but they're not structured to where we force anyone to do anything. Uh, you have to voluntarily get up and go to class. Yeah. There are even therapy dogs. How you feel? Nervous, but good. I'm ready. Was it worthwhile to be here? Yeah, absolutely. Good. After several weeks at the unit in the jail, many men, quote, stepped down to a facility about 20 minutes away in Springfield. Located in a renovated nursing home, it has fewer restrictions and is more like a dorm. The emphasis remains on recovery. It's getting in touch with the inner peace, the way we were hitting the drums. We have to find that because it's not the drink and the drug. It's enjoying life without it. 39-year-old Antoine Diaz has struggled with addiction for more than a decade. He lost his brother to a heroin overdose last year. This time when I relapsed, my twin brother was dead. And that's when it's, it's easier to die. It really is. People are not really suicidal, but they just, the pain and the suffering becomes overbearing that they just want to shoot it away. And next thing you know, it could be a bad batch and you're gone. And I experienced that this time. I was dead for three and a half minutes. No heartbeat, no nothing. After being revived, Diaz was sectioned by his family. Then they came and said, you're getting sectioned. I flipped out. I hated my wife. I hated everybody. But she was right. I needed to be removed. That's what a section is. You need to be removed from society. Since the program began last May, more than 1,000 people have gone through the Section 35 program in Hamden County. And the Sheriff's Department says fewer than 5% have been sectioned again. But it doesn't track relapses that don't result in another civil commitment. We're not telling you that we have a magic wand and we can wave it and we can cure people because there is no cure. 
we're engaged every day trying to be part of the solution in taking another chunk out of this ravaging, ugly disease of opioid addiction. Antoine Diaz credits the approach of the Hamden County Sheriff with helping him get to this point. I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't like Coach E. Right? Well, for Sheriff, I had another guy I liked. But I swear to God to you, I swear to you, his message and his way for recovery is passionate, real. The programming, everything is, is progressive. It's like it's different. Over here, we have another uh, classroom area. To pay for the program's first year, Kochi reallocated nearly $3 million from the existing Sheriff's Department budget. And in July, the Massachusetts legislature earmarked an additional million dollars for the program. Now, $1 million is a drop in the hat, but it was a major move in the right direction, especially with all the people that are criticizing the program. Why would you have a system where instead of using health care settings to treat a disease, you put that money into prisons. Bonnie Teneriello is one of those critics. She's a staff attorney at Prisoners Legal Services of Massachusetts, a nonprofit group that represents incarcerated people. It may be a nicer environment than a, an ordinary uh, prison setting, but it's still a prison. And you're still telling people you belong in jail. There's already enough stigma around addiction that for us to say it's okay to put people with addiction in jail just furthers that stigma, furthers a belief in our communities that these people are bad. Uh, and that's going to stop people from getting treatment. Teneriello is suing the state to end the use of jails for treatment on behalf of 10 men who have been sectioned at a facility in Plymouth called the Massachusetts Alcohol and Substance Abuse Center, or MASAC. The suit alleges abusive behavior by corrections officers, minimal substance abuse treatment, and overall, a traumatizing experience for people sectioned there. If you put people in jail, they're going to act like they're in jail, and a lot of people did. 37-year-old Joel Kergaravat is not one of the plaintiffs in the lawsuit, but he spent several weeks in MASAC. He was sectioned by his family last June after struggling with opioid addiction. The Department of Corrections is equipped to handle prisoners. They're not equipped to handle mentally ill or sick people. Um, that was evidenced by the fact that they would, you know, refer to us as junkies and, you know, pieces of shit. and it's not, it's not their arena. Kirgaravat has so been I, sober for about a year, but he says that's in spite of his experience at MASAC, not because of it. There isn't, there's no treatment, nothing I would consider treatment there. It felt like having gone to jail for for a period of time for a uh, crime that they didn't commit. Citing the pending litigation, the Massachusetts Department of Correction, which operates MASAC, declined an interview with PBS NewsHour Weekend. But in court filings, the state denied the suit's allegations and strongly rejects, as both a factual matter and a legal matter, the suggestion that the commitment of Section 35 patients to its facilities is equivalent to incarceration or imprisonment. The Hamden County Sheriff's Department is not specifically named as a defendant, but Bonnie Teneriello says the lawsuit aims to end the use of jails for all Section 35 commitments across the state. She says that would simply put men and women in the state on equal ground. Remember, women who are sectioned are treated only in civil settings. That's because in 2016, the Massachusetts legislature explicitly changed the law. And there's now pending legislation that would do the same for men. In September, a joint committee of state legislators held a hearing on this issue. We are the only state in the nation that sends people with addictions for involuntary treatment to a prison facility. This is what we need to change and what we want to change. And in July, a state commission also recommended that Massachusetts end the practice. When people point at us and say, yeah, this shouldn't happen there, well, where else is it going to happen? There was not one bed for these type of men in western Massachusetts till we opened this program a year ago. And now they want to tell me, well, you shouldn't be doing it? Hey, how about a phone call and say thank you? I'll take those calls all day long. Antoine Diaz says the setting in a criminal justice facility is not what makes being sectioned hard. It's not jail, you're civil. It doesn't matter where they house you at. In reality, being here, people don't want to be left alone. Being here is hard for me, you know why? Because I, I have to be left with me. And I'm the problem, and it's uncomfortable but it teaches me how to grow, you know? It did not feel like jail, and I did a jail bed. 
instead of taking shots at us, come on down and see it for yourself. Sheriff Kochi says he's open to having his program regulated by civil agencies in the state, including the Department of Public Health. But in the meantime, he says, the stakes could not be higher. Take my 120 beds away. Then what? How many funerals are we going to? How many family members have, have got to, to bury a loved one? I'm not going to be on that side of the coin. But that's a false choice. You, 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 have, you need a civilian setting for these people. We're not saying take the treatment away. What we want is a commitment to fund and make available treatment in healthcare settings where it belongs. Teneriello supports the pending state legislation to make that happen. But Sheriff Kochi argues that his program should be allowed to continue, even if others in the state are not. I would ask, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, please. If we're doing it right, acknowledge that. Carve us out. Allow us to do what we're doing. For now, the sheriff will continue doing exactly that. But opposition to providing treatment for civilly committed men behind these gates remains.